What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound Attack once again, and today I'm going to try to answer the question why is my hash rate lower than it should be? This question has two main portions to it. One is going to be, well, whatever your minor application is reporting, and if that seems lower than it should be, versus, of course, being lower than you think it should be within the actual mining pool reporting. And this can be quite confusing for some people, so we're gonna to try to clear it up today. But first, a word from our sponsor. The following is a paid advertisement. Prime XBT is an established trading platform that was founded in 2018 and remained in business through the bear market. From my personal research, there are three main reasons they set themselves apart from other trading platforms. High leverage, low fees, and most importantly, privacy. Prime XBT requires no user information to start trading. The newest module called Covesting allows users to copy the trading activity of other users. Remember, any form of investing comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Use promo code SONOFATECH at sign up for a 50% bonus. Okie dokie, make sure you guys hit the referral link down in the description below and use the referral code son of tech, which I am trying to get them to fix, but there is no A in there. I just realized that yesterday and you know it is what it is. So first things first, if you guys are just getting into mining and you are basically popping onto the interwebs and you're like RTX 3080 hash rate and you see somebody reporting 100 mega hash a second at whatever watts and then you spin yours up and you're getting 87 mega hash. Well, first of all, you need to check your overclocks because more than likely, you don't have the same overclocks that somebody else has, and that's why it's lower. It's the same reason why in gaming benchmarks, X user is getting whatever, and B user or whatnot is getting less, and it's probably because of the overclocks. It could also be due to the quality of the GPU itself. So for example, like a gigabyte with their absolute pads, they don't, they don't hash well until you replace the thermal pads, which is another thing we're gonna talk about too, right? So first thing though, is you always wanna check your overclock. Make sure that you have it overclocked within the range of other users. And for the 3000 series, to be honest, around 2100 to 2400 megahertz will get you right in that range. What I've noticed is depending on the GPU going above that though too, uh, the 2100 for some models, the 2400 for other models will actually reduce your hash rate. So the next thing is check your overclocks again and make sure they're not too high because just because the card can run at a higher memory frequency doesn't mean that's where it's gonna perform better. If you've ever watched anybody do like an overclocking competition or anything along those lines, typically they're going up step by step by step by step. So let's say like 50 megahertz at a time on the memory and then and as soon as they get to the point to where the benchmark reports that it's actually performing worse, they knock it back that 50 megahertz or whatever. And then they'll kind of go up by 10 by 10 by 10 by 10, and then knock it back down 10, and then go up by five by five by five by five. The reason for this is they're trying to find the exact amount of performance they can actually get out of the card. And this is what you should be doing with each individual GPU. Yes, it's time consuming, but it will pay off in the long run because you will be more consistent and make more money, right? That's pretty much it, or Ethereum, right? So hopefully that clears that up. It's always the overclocks, unless it's not, and then it's always the pad, bro. So the next thing is, of course, if you're getting lower hash rates, you've already dialed it in. Let's say it's a week or two down the line, your card starts getting less and less hash rate. This is really, really common on the RTX 3000 series cards where the card will be performing just as you expect it. The overclocks seem to be perfectly fine. And then boom, one day it's down like 20 mega hash a second. The reason this is happening is because of the thermal pad breakdown. Now, the breakdown on the thermal pads is due to primarily poor thermal pad quality that was released in a lot of the recent batches of the 3000 series GPUs. A couple that we can call out specifically, or one specifically that I can confirm, is going to be, of course, 
Gigabyte, who at this point has by far the worst thermal pads out in existence coming from the factory. And basically those pads are breaking down, which you'll also notice is a whole bunch of oiliness around them. This was also an issue on the 10 series EVGA GPUs, 1080 Ti's, so on. What you would notice is the back plate would start getting oily. And that's because those thermal pads would break down and they basically just spill oil all over the place is what it feels like. So if you see any hints of oil going on on the back plate or coming out from the fins or from the bottom of the PCB or anything like that, you know immediately it's the pads. But just because you don't see it doesn't mean it isn't the pads because frankly, like I said, almost all of these 3000 series GPUs have some sort of pad issues. Now in the case of EVGA on the 3000 series, they are using thermal putty, which makes it really difficult right now to replace the pads effectively. And that's because thermal putty is a little hard to get your hands on and there's no standard sizing for thermal pads, which is why when we had the 3090 issue, we just went ahead and ordered the hybrid cooler. That's a little funky, at least on the Gigabyte side, the pads are pretty much standard size and you're good to go. On the EVGA side, it's less likely you're gonna have to replace the pads. However, if you do have to replace them, they're non-standard size, making it more difficult. Tangent aside, let's go ahead and talk about not reporting the hash rate on the mining pool that you are seeing in your miner itself. So let's say you have Phoenix miner or Team Red miner, T-Rex miner, or NB miner. Look, I don't care whichever one it is. You have it showing that it's getting 50 mega hash a second, let's say, and you pop into the pool and it says that, you know, your current hash rate is like, I don't know, 47 mega hash a second or something. And then sometimes it says that it's 55 mega hash. Well, what's going on? Well, basically this comes down to when we were talking in the pool video or the pools video, how to pick one about that aspect of luck. And what that means is there's a probability of amount of shares you're going to be able to solve and submit to, of course, the mining pool. So when the mining pool is reading your hash rate, it's basically basing that off of an average of amount of work you've done over a certain amount of time. But if you're not finding any shares or you're, you're not doing the work, it's not gonna calculate that in. And that's why your hash rate on the mining pool fluctuates. For example, here I have it pulled up, uh, just a random miner on Ethermine. And as you can see here, the current hash rate is the blue line. And then you have your reported hash rate, which it is getting from the miner. And then you have your average hash rate. So basically your or re your reported hash rate is what it's reading from the actual mining software, while the current hash rate is what the pool is actually getting as far as shares from your miner. And then of course your average is over time for however long you've been mining. Depending on the pool, this could be a 24 hour average and whatever, right? It just depends. So as you can see, the blue, which is your current hash rate, fluctuates a lot and even sometimes if you're performing well it'll go above and then come back down so as a miner your goal is to obviously keep your shares as submitted shares as high as possible in the next video we're going to go ahead and talk about how you can do that by basically pinging pools and finding what your latency is so if you're interested in that hit the sub and the notification bell we'll go over that in more detail but essentially all you really need to know at this point is that it's based on from the pool's perspective how much work you're actually doing and because there's an amount of probability to that it's going to fluctuate so what does that mean as far as mining pools like we talked about yesterday you have different mining pool payout methods and this is why you should go back and watch that video and really pay attention to the different methods of payouts because your average hash rate will essentially determine the amount of shares you're getting, right? And that will basically determine how the pool is gonna pay you out based on their payout method. So for example, PPS Plus is very popular for miners because you get a more consistent payout method based more closely to the hash rate you are actually sending out and less closely to the amount of shares that you are actually performing. Now in the case of Ethermine, it's completely the opposite because they only pay out 
based on the amount of shares you've submitted and the amount of work you've done and only when they find a block you're going to get a less consistent payout however when you see those little lines go above the average or about above the reported then you're actually getting paid out a little bit more so that luck can play in your favor or play against you just depending on the performance of the pool on the network on any given at any given time hopefully that clears that up First things to check, obviously if it's within your miner, you wanna check your overclocks, then you wanna check your thermal pads to make sure you're not thermal throttling. And then finally, if it's actually the reporting on the pool, then you may want to just go ahead and try a few different pools, see if you can get better latency to a different pool, which would then increase your shares in theory. Most of the time this does prove to be true. And if you're increasing the amount of shares you're submitting to the pool, you're gonna increase your payout. That should wrap it up. I hope the video is helpful. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here, or of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.